kids, and welcome to Passport Adventures, where each week I'll be your tour guide as we explore countries of the world from the comforts of home. And where are we headed this week? This week we're headed south of the border to the country of Mexico. Let's go! we've landed at the Capitol building in Mexico City. Built on the ruins of an ancient Aztec city, Mexico City is one of the oldest cities in the Americas. It has a mix of colonial architecture, modern factories, and skyscrapers. Sharing a border with San Diego, California, Tijuana is the most visited border city in the world. Ah, oh, beautiful. The Mexican city of Mazatlan is known as the Pearl of the Pacific for its beautiful beaches and its very friendly people. While over 8% of Mexicans live in the cities, there are also small towns nestled in the mountains. There's lush land for farming with farmhouses that look like this. There's beautiful deserts where people build homes out of bricks made of mud and straw called adobe. They have amazing beaches along both coasts of the country. Not to mention 48 active volcanoes. Speaking of volcanoes, look at this guy. I gotta get out of the way so you can see how cute he is. Mexico is home to the volcano rabbit. This short-legged, short-eared rabbit lives only on the high slopes of four volcanoes in central Mexico. Well, because Mexico is made up of desert, forest, and rainforest, it's home to some really cool animals like this cody, which they call the Mexican raccoon. Oh, the alligator garfish. The cute Mexican spider monkey. The armadillo, the agouti, the gorgeous scarlet macaw, the tapir, the flamingo, the jaguar, look at that guy, the keelbilled toucan, the green iguana, and this adorable animal, the exultal. Oh, Mexico's climate brought us another natural wonder, cacao beans. Thousands of years ago, the native people of Mexico first began enjoying these beans, mostly as a hot drink. In the year 1528, the explorer Cortes brought them back to his home country of Spain, and the world has been joy enjoying chocolate ever since. We've explored other countries and their relationship with chocolate. Remember the people of Switzerland ate the most, about 20 pounds of it a year? And the United States, we eat about 10 pounds of it every year per person. But in Mexico, where they grow all those wonderful cacao beans, they only eat about one and a half pounds per person. Hmm. But don't worry. These kids would tell you they have a lot of other candy treats to enjoy. Now, if we want to say hello to them, it's very simple. We could just say, buenos dias. They would have names like Santiago and Valencia. And if we ask them what they do for fun, they would probably say things like baseball and soccer, swimming, and playing marbles, and just hanging out with their family and friends and laughing. If we asked them about any special days they could tell us about, they would most likely tell us about this one, Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. There are huge parades, painting faces and wearing costumes. You see, it's a day to honor the loved ones that you've lost, but it isn't a sad day at all. It's a celebration. They decorate and picnic in the cemeteries. They construct 
elaborate altars in their homes with pictures of their loved ones and special things that remind them of things that loved ones enjoy. And they don't have to be elaborate. You could even make an altar in a shoebox. Look at it. It's an altar for their grandma and grandpa. And they've included things like <laughs> some Vicks Vapo rub. Maybe grandma rubbed some on their chest when they were sick and it made them feel better. And Doritos. Maybe grandpa just couldn't get enough Doritos. It's a happy time. Marigolds are often displayed at the cemetery and in the altars in the home. And they put out special food for their loved ones, including Day of the Dead bread. And speaking of food, there is a special treat that the kids get to eat on this day. Sugar skulls. They're an extra special treat that's part of this celebration. Wow, this went by really, really fast this week. If we want to say goodbye to our Mexican friends, we simply say adios. So, Mexico, it was fast, it was fun, and now it's time to say goodbye. Adios, Mexico! Welcome back. Oh, good to be home. And I put some things in your packet to remind us of our trip to Mexico. So inside your packet, you will find a Day of the Dead mask. This is very simple. You color it in. Now, most of the mask is left white to look like a skeleton. And then the bright colors are added. So once you've colored it in and cut it out, then you can attach pipe cleaners to the side. And well, you're very scared of you. Yeah, actually, it's not scary. Look how happy this guy is. He's so friendly. I'm not afraid of sugar skulls at all, and neither should you be. Okay. Our other craft is a bit more complicated. Let's see. Uh, we're going to make... <laughs> it looks like it's invisible in here. That's because of the green screen. This is a green colored center. <laughs> it looks like I have a hole in the middle. So we're going to make these giant flowers. Uh, dinner plate dahlias. They're called dinner plate because they're really big. Dinner plate dahlias are the national flower of Mexico. And so this is a very typical Mexican craft that the kids make. They take tissue and they make really big dahlias out of it. So what I've put in your packet is this. So there'll be five sheets of one color of tissue paper and then a skinny piece of a different color of tissue paper and everyone's is going to be a little bit different. So if you have trouble following my directions, you're not alone. Uh, <laughs> if you really get frustrated and you can't, can't follow them, there are plenty of uh, YouTube videos that do this craft. Hopefully I can make it understandable. What you want to do is line up all five of the colored pieces. One, two, three. You're going to be doing this smoothing <laughs> and keeping together quite a bit. So you're going to take those five. Then you take the smaller one that's a different color and put it right in the middle. So far, so good. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky. I don't know if you've ever folded something to make it an accordion, like if you were making a fan, you'd flip back and forth. But that's what we're going to do here. We're going to move these up just uh, about an inch and a half or so and fold. First fold is the easy one, just like that. Now, you're not going to keep going boom, 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 like you're rolling it up. 
you have to fold in the other direction. So you flip it over and fold in the other direction. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to flip it back again and go back in this direction. This is called accordion folding and it's the part that I tend to get a little messed up on. So I'm going to try really hard to get it right for you. The further down you get, the easier it is. There's less paper to flip. Now when I get to the end, there's a little bit left over, so all you do with that left over is cut it off the end. got this right. <laughs> so, so far, so good. Now we're going to open it up. And I'm just going to take this off the top and fold it back the same way it was. Pinch it down here, right? Now, this loose part up here, we're going to make some fringe. They call it fringe. We're going to make some fringe. It's going to make the middle of the flower a little poofy and wiggly, which was hard to see in my sample because it was green, so it just disappeared. Okay, I think this might be one of the trickiest parts. We've made it fringy, and now we have to put it back where we found it, with all of those folds. But I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Aha! Success. So, we fold up our accordion again. Alrighty. I'm feeling confident now. I'm going to move it a little bit more towards the middle. Okay. Now, there's a pipe cleaner. So you had five sheets of tissue one half sheet of tissue, and a pipe cleaner. The pipe cleaner is going to secure the middle of your flower. So you want it nice and tight. Twist, 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 twist. Okay, you have a stem. That can be left over as the stem. All right, fingers crossed. Here's the proof, is in the pudding. We start spreading out our pieces. First, you can pull up to the center, because you want the center of your flower to be sticking straight out with all its fuzzy goodness. So you pull those up. Some of them might rip a little bit. Try not to be too forceful, but some of them are bound to rip. It's tissue paper, and tissue paper is very thin. Okay, so now we have a funky shape for the middle, but our petals also need to be curvy and pretty too. So we can straighten this back out, and then just take scissors, and you can make them a little bit pointy, 
or a little bit rounded at the end. So whether you use a U shape or a V shape on the end of your petals is up to you. I did more of the U. All right, here we go. One layer at a time. to start separating the five sheets of tissue. Again, don't get too wild with it or you might rip it, but if a little bit tears, that's okay. Do your best to separate it calmly. One layer, two layer, three layer. Like I just ripped? Yeah. See? It happens. There's one side. Floopity doo. Do the next side. Spread it out. And then separate. the middle, it almost has like a waist in the middle. And flowers aren't shaped like that. So all we need to do is get just a little bit of scotch tape. And you don't have to tape all of them together, but maybe the back part, you flip it over to the back and put a piece of tape so they're connected. So you don't have a big split in your flower. Do the same with the other side. Oh, pull, 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 pull without ripping. It's an art. You know what else is an art? Not getting tape stuck on your finger. Almost there. Voila! We now have, you know what I did? Look what I did, boys and girls. Where is the stem of the flower? Is that how flowers grow? With a big old stem in the middle? No, that's just my special flower. <laughs> like I said, if I'm confusing you, there are tutorials online. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, here we go, here's my giant dinner plate dahlia, symbol of Mexico. Last but not least, in your packet, there is a recipe for Day of the Dead Bread, and I made Day of the Dead Bread last night, and I'm telling you, it made the house smell so good but I have no idea what it's going to taste like. On here, there's optional orange glaze. I put on the orange glaze. If I had to do over again, I might not because it's very sticky. But after I taste it, I might decide the orange glaze was the right decision. Let's find out. So when you make the Day of the Dead bread, it's a, a free-form loaf. It's just like a flying saucer disc kind of shape. And then you make little bone shapes, and the recipe will tell you to take some of it and make little bone shapes, and you put those on top before you bake it. Let's see how this turns. Slice it through bone. Okay, it's very sticky because of the orange glaze. 
Mm, I made the right choice. <laughs> yes, the orange glaze actually gives it, um, I, I would still eat it um, toasted with butter, like a regular bread, but that orange glaze gives it just a little bit of a dessert feeling to it. So I hope you make this bread. I'm going to go enjoy some of this right now. It's really good. And I'll see you next week. Where are we headed next week? Ha <laughs> ha! I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to tune in to find out. Until then, adios!